Tony, you've had the two scrimmages. What did you come out of it most encouraged about, and what areas do you most need to clean up or area? I, I thought as the scr both scrimmages, um, we, I guess I'll answer it, we, we struggled early in the first halves and then played better in the second halves, which I guess is, is what you, you'd want. So I was encouraged that um, as the scrimmages wore on in those games against two you know, quality opponents, those I, I've always been a big believer in those to go against you know, legitimate athleticism and size, although uh, one of the scrimmages, the, the young man for UConn didn't play, the, the seven two guy that played well for him in the, their national championship run. Um, they're good, but I thought we, what I liked is uh, a lot of guys got opportunities. You saw um, them play really hard throughout and fix some things. And so I thought that was good. We had good second halves, uh, or better second halves, I should say. And then, you know, some things that were concerning, you know, like typical being a newer team with inexperienced, I thought um, it was a little bit of a cold water in the face, you know, the the pace at which teams got down the floor, uh, the the physicality on offensive rebounding, some of those key areas that we always talk about and every team has to be really good at. And um, we just had some some inexperience. There's senior moments, and then there's, I guess, what do you call them, uh, freshman moments. So we had some of those moments or new moments. But, uh, but yeah, overall, you know, it was a chance to play different guys, look at different combinations. Uh, Dante did not get to play in the second one. He had um, had uh, aggravated a shoulder, so you know. And, and he, you know, some of the guys showed some good stuff, and he he did a good job in the first scrimmage. And so I was looking forward to seeing him in that second one. But um, we're hopeful he should be should be okay. Uh, Tony, we saw a little bit of Leon Bond in the blue white scrimmage, and we heard a lot of good things about him from practice last year. Talk about how important his role is this year and what role he will play. Yeah, I mean, all that's to be determined. His role is very important, and he's improved. Leon has, you know, the value of taking a year to just uh, go to work. You know, he's he's a little newer to the game. We got a couple of those guys, and his upside is exciting. And he's just in his first year of playing, and he's, he's shown some really good flashes and really good improvement, and sometimes he's as – <clears throat> his harshest critic. We actually are working on that, trying to, to really um, speak life and be positive. And, and when you're going through adverse times, uh, dealing with that, that's all part of the, the progression for him. But, you know, he, he shows he can slash. He, um, he's showing that he's got a beautiful little fall away jumper and get to the elbow. And he's continuing to learn to be accountable defensively, consistently, the hardest thing for every new group. But I think we've got, you know, Right now, a handful of guys, I told them we could have a revolving door starting lineup in terms of who starts based on the matchups or who's playing well. And I think there's some depth of, you know, whether you can play 10 guys remains to be seen, nine or 10, but I think there's legitimate depth. And it really will be um, how guys, you know, when they get minutes, they look and then how they practice. And that's sort of how it's always been. But regarding Leon, yeah, I like his, his improvement, the trajectory that he's on. And uh, I think the good thing about Leon, he knows this, we know this, he's got, he's, um, what we're going to see now compared to next year and the following year, he's just going to get better and better. And so uh, his progression is there, but he's got a ways to go in those areas that he knows that can make a difference, just building those habits. And I, I love his mindset and uh, his, his, he was one of the loudest guys on the bench when he wasn't playing against Maryland. And I hear that stuff and I see that. And um, and so I like that. So excited about what he did. He looked really good in that blue-white scrimmage. That was that was good stuff. And he's he's just fun to watch because he's he's there's a uh, you know a smoothness to how he moves and slashes and does things. And sometimes we want that smoothness to be a little more uh, less smooth and a little more um, quicker. But but all that being said, he's he's going in the right direction, and I'm glad he's here. Yeah, uh, Tony, you're, you're a little thin in terms of experience of low post players. What kind of an opportunity is there for Blake and, and how much pressure is there on you as a staff to maybe get him ready in time? Yeah, um, Blake's, you know, he's the good thing about Blake and in, in coming in, um, you know, just he's, he's naturally uh, competitive and, and physical and tough, though maybe he doesn't have the, 
the weight and all that is that he will have in the years to come. He plays really hard. If there's a loose ball, he's on it. If there's a ball up on the, the rim, he's attacking for offensive rebounds. So he plays a real aggressive, hard playing way. And um, he had a good scrimmage in his first one against UConn. You could see that. Against Maryland, he probably wasn't as effective, but um, he shows some things in practice. And again, he's quick footed, he's mobile. And he thinks quick. You guys have heard me talk all the years I've been here that guys that are continuous, that can anticipate and, and think quick um, and, and have some toughness, usually they're going to end up being darn good defensive players. And he's already showing that. Um, I know Isaiah Wilkins really is high on him. He, you know, that's how Isaiah played. If you remember Isaiah, he just was in two places at once, on the floor, picking up charges, loose uh, offensive rebounds. So I, I think he has those things that we'll need. And because we are, um, you know, less experienced in the in the front court, I think there'll be some opportunities for him, and we'll we'll have to certainly he'll he'll grow he'll grow through his mistakes he'll go through his successes, and um, but you know again so far like Leon promising future. Coach, it seems like defensively you guys have a number of people who can block shots, create live ball turnovers, and in Dante and Reese, maybe a couple point guards who want to push the ball up the floor a little bit. Do you think that that could provide the opportunity to run maybe a little bit more than in years past? Yeah, you guys every year ask me, you're just begging me, can we go a little faster? It's, it's unbelievable in different ways I get asked that. So let's start with those two. Um, point guard on ball defensive pressure, huge. We've been fortunate the last number of years with Kihei, uh, I go all the way back to, you know, John Tell Evans, Bub, who, you know, those of you who've been around the program, but uh, just a tough, hard-nosed guy on ball. W when you can set your defense with an on-ball pressure, and Reese obviously can do that, and Reese can play off the ball defensively, and Dante, he's in that mode of uh, one of the better, quicker, pestier on-ball defenders we've had. So when you can set that up, that behind you gets the other guys down and ready even more. Um, shot blocking, I don't know if we're a great shot blocking team. I think we have some length and quickness, but absolutely, if your defense can create turnovers or loose balls or opportunities, that's when you have to capitalize and you want to get some of those um, defense to offensive plays. In our two scrimmages, we've actually um, we've had some turnovers, but I think there have been more turnovers, whether that's because the other team was sloppy or maybe defensively we forced some, which did turn into some of the transition baskets that you want. And again, you know, though, if, if, we, if we have good opportunities in transition, I never pretend to say, oh, we're going to run like the days when, um, you know, Coach Williams was at Carolina and it was or Kansas, you know, makes or misses. No, but opportunistically, if something's there and it it's, makes sense, we should. And we should get up the floor and do that. And guys have freedom. But we always talk about backing it up with a good decision. And sometimes, quite honestly, the games are so physical and so intense and guys are working so hard, they will use that transition to just rest a little bit as they're coming up the floor. But then I think sometimes you have to go. And um, so I think, I hope, I hope we can get a few more of those opportunities because Ryan can slash, get down the floor, and certainly Leon, and, uh, uh, um, Leon can slash, and certainly uh, Dante and, and Reese you mentioned. Um, as far as shot blocking, I don't think we've been a terrific shot blocking team in the scrimmages. Um, but it uh, doesn't mean, you know, hopefully we will be able to do that. When you add transfers from the mid-major level like you did this offseason, what skills are you hoping translate? What skills are you looking for that they maybe you know will translate to this level? Yeah, well, first of all, when you're trying to evaluate, um, you've seen them play a lot of times these, whether whatever low, mid, whatever level they come from, they've had some games against power five schools, so you get to watch them in that setting. But just that's college experience that you're playing against good teams. And so I think you you get the experience, even though they're new to your place, you look for um, you know, how they did over the consistency of a year, you know, obviously with Jordan Minor and um, Andrew coming from more of the, the mid-major that you're talking about, Andrew Rohde, um, that's invaluable. I mean, Jordan played a number of years. Uh, Andrew was just, um, you know, obviously a freshman last year. But in Andrew's case, you know, you looked at his completeness offensively. He, he sometimes played the point guard for St. Thomas. Um, he moved without the ball. He's a very good passer. He just has good feel for the game. You know, we felt like we needed to add, um, you know, that on the perimeter. And then Jordan, you know, though he won't be able to probably go over the top and, and bully people 
in you know a lot of the teams in in our league he was a relentless offensive rebounder he played really hard and he was physical and he's just mature when you look at him and mature you know the way he acts the way he conducts himself but um physically and we thought losing the guys we lost we thought we needed to add you know some physicality and we already talked about being a little thin in the front court and inexperienced uh, that was the idea so you know just that they've done it in a college setting and I got well, I played at Green Bay and we always said good basketball knows no limits or divisions and we've uh, we've lived that many times and we know that whenever you play those teams Ed. Hey, Tony. Um, as Eric said, it's year 15. Um, not to put a too much bigger number on it, That's but a um, big number. so you're one of you're one of the senior guys in the ACC now. I know you don't have a lot of time for reflection or maybe inclination to do so, but um, during the off season, there's a lot of changes in college basketball and, and college sports in general. How much do you consider how you can stay true to what you do moving forward, and you know maybe double down, adapt, whatever you need to do to to maintain you know the Virginia way, if you will. Right. I mean, you got Leonard, you got Jim Laranega, Leonard Hamilton, and um, I trying to think, uh, no, there's one more. There's one more. I remember I said I got asked this. That's older than me. That's coaching. Who else? Come on. Help me out here. Who? Brad's our age. I thought there was one more besides those two. I got to, it's going to come back to me. Uh, yeah, but even... Like those two, just even, you know, I'm going into my 15th year. Anyways, uh, it's a senior moment I had, right? I am getting old. I can't remember <laughs> who the guys were. Uh, you're, you're right, though. Um, I think you have to, uh, you know, adapt and adjust. You can't, as I've said, just be oblivious to what's going on and say we're not budging on anything. You have to adapt and adjust. But as in life, as in anything, there are certain things that are your, your bedrocks, your, your cores. And those don't change. And we always talk about what our pillars are, how we'll recruit, what we'll do. When you use the word double down, that's the word we've been using a lot, double down on the right stuff and stay true to what has made us successful, who we've recruited, how we've done it, but also be consistent with the times and understand that there is some uh, adjusting and you have to be adaptable. And that's where we're obviously talking to Carla Williams and our administration saying, you know, how do we navigate these new things? And I think everyone, I said this at the ACC Media Day, whether they want to act like it or not, everyone's in a little bit of an experimental mode. No one knows what's the way to navigate name, image, and likeness and the transfer portal. You know, you can say, hey, should we just recruit only transfer portals? Well, there's some challenges at the University of Virginia that would limit you to do that. Uh, or we're going to just go in and we're going to see if we can raise as much money as possible in a collective and, and divvy thing, you know. And no one, what's the right way to do it? No one, everyone's experimenting. So what we're going to double down on is do it in a way that's consistent with our values, our beliefs, treat our guys, guys the right way, and want people who want to be here for what we believe is the, the winning way and the right way, not just on the court. And we'll lose people because of that. It's challenging. But um, maybe programs in the past who've done it a little differently and uh, they got a head start on how all this stuff works. But... Um, I believe those who stay faithful and true to doing it in a way with adjusting, you know, the pendulum or the, the water will find its level, and I hope they'll be successful. If not, if this just becomes what people are dreading it to become um, and no one knows that, then you address that at that time. But the best thing about coaching, whether it's your style of play, um, how you treat your players, how you build your program, how you navigate new changes in the college landscape, it's your choice. You get to do it how you want. It's your program if you have an administration that will, will back that. And that will never change. And that, that's what I love about the college game. It's not a cookie cutter game like the NBA is or you know, maybe even some other sports. No, this is your system, your style, and there's so many varying ways to go about it. And um, same thing about how you do this new landscape of transfer portals and name, image, and likeness. And there are some good things with those. I'm not trying to say there's not, but um, it's got to be taken in the right context and done the right way. And that's not for everyone. Um, but we'll try to, try to stay true to the, the vision of what our administration wants and what I believe is the right way. Hey, Coach, back here. Uh, the last couple of seasons, if we're talking shot selection, you've trended more towards two-point field goal attempts, especially late in the season with a new 
cast of characters. Uh, do you see any opportunity for reversion to hunt threes a little bit more? I know you started the scrimmage with a three-point contest. Can you just talk about yeah. shot selection a little bit? Yeah. Well, that means we're going to do it then, doesn't it? I mean, I was going to start with a slam dunk contest and a transition drill. I should have done all that. You guys are, what is happening? This is the, the new era. Um, no, I think, you know, we, you know, I, I don't know, shooting the ball, we were a little, when we shot the ball well from three, we were terrific last year. We were pretty streaky with our three-point shooting. Um, I, I think it's, again, the same thing, as I said, opportunistically. If it's a good look and it's the right guys, take it early. Um, if we were probably a little more mid-range oriented last year with how we played. Uh, this year, you know, I'm, my hope is Isaac McNeely can stretch the floor and shoot the ball. Uh, he's shown that. Jake Groves, the transfer from Oklahoma, can play the, you know, he can stretch it, whether he's playing a forward spot. Obviously, Reese has really improved his shot. Um, you know, Andrew Rohde is, you know, he's a complete player, but he'll stretch it. Um, and Tane's improved his shot. I'm just trying to go through guys, you know, so guys can take it. but. If it's a good shot at the right time with the right guys, absolutely, it's a green light to take it. But sometimes, you know, good defenses take that away or you just take what you can get. And last year, I thought we were a touch more um, mid-range oriented at times with our system. And again, you can look at analy analytics, and that's important. But uh, the last thing you want to be doing is shooting a ton of threes if it's guys that aren't as consistent with it. Or, you know, if you're not a great interior scoring team, trying to pound it inside all the time. So it's just what the defense gives you, what your team can do. And you do want to have a good balance. But I think sometimes the game dictates that and how teams guard you, and certainly philosophically what you believe. So when we had Kyle and Ty and those teams, we shot more threes or we had, you know, there's more green light. I, I believe we shot more. I, at least our percentage was better. I think we were shot more too. So a lot of it has to do with your personnel. Yeah, whether it's on or off the court, you have so many new faces. How do you make sure that they're all gelling together and, and kind of what are the challenges of that? Yeah, um, that is the challenge. But you start with your um, your leadership, your older guys, uh, the guys that have been in here, not that there's a ton of them. Um, you hopefully, when you're recruiting them, you recruit the kind of guys that do believe in unity, that are really fiercely competitive, but they're, they're, they understand that they'll, what gets done will get done together at a high level. And with that can come individual opportunities. But um, I think you have to do, you know, the ounce of prevention can be worth a pound of cure. Doesn't mean you won't have issues at times. But I think we've always been strong. Uh, my staff's done a great job and always been strong at finding the right guys that believe in a unified approach and that are really competitive and, you know, have the right characteristics to, to be that. And that's the best thing about basketball it's the one sport, maybe you could argue there's some other ones, but where not always the most talented individuals win. I think basketball is a sport where the synergy or the, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. But like, if guys understand roles, if they're really connected and they play that way on both ends of the floor, um, you, can, you can advance and be better. I love that about the game of basketball. I, I think you're hard pressed to find that in other sports. I'm sure every coach of their sport could tell me differently. But I really, when you think about it, that's the beauty of this sport. And, and that's what's made us successful. Yes, we've had individual talent. But sometimes man for man or you know, all that, you, you can't always match up. So how do you do it? So you find guys that buy into that, that understand that, no roles, and are built that way. And um, my hope is that as the season goes on, I think you know with this newness, we've got a very good schedule with some of the veteran teams we're playing. But, as it goes on, I hope we'll, we'll grow from it and see where we're at. And it'll be for the fans even, you know, maybe they don't like this or do like this. I think they've always enjoyed growing with our players. They've seen them over the years like, man, I've watched this guy progress. And I hope they'll get to do it now. It's kind of a new slate of guys, minus, you know, obviously Reese, but to watch McNeely grow, to watch Dunn grow, to watch, you know, all these new guys that have come in and hopefully grow over the years and we can, you know, retention to the best of our abilities, keep the core together. That's that's what we're trying to do. That's kind of the way that we've had success, but also adapting to. Coach, you mentioned Ryan Dunn growing. Last year, I think he played the majority of his minutes in the front court at the four. In that blue-white yep. scrimmage, he looked really comfortable as a passer, sometimes on the perimeter. Do you think he has some of that 3-4 versatility and to make more plays with the ball? Yeah, in his I hands? think so. He, um, yeah, he played 11 minutes a game last year for us. He was going to come in and potentially walk on if we didn't have a scholarship, but he was going to redshirt if he wasn't ready. And, you know, it's all happening so fast for Ryan. And, like, he got 11 minutes a game. And the reason he played is he brought incredible energy and defensive activity. 
And I said, never forget that. Sometimes we say, okay, has his game developed? Absolutely, and we'll play him. You know, he can guard multiple positions, and he's played some four spot for us, and he has played some three, and that's the hope. Um, but he's gotten stronger, he's, he's improved, he's gotten better, and he's just got to keep working. He's kind of newer to the game, too. And so um, at times you see that, but I love his progression. And, uh, and he's just got to, you know, I told him, you've got to be a defensive monster for us. I see he he's got to be. He's got to use that athleticism and quickness, and he's going to have to help us on the glass in a big way because we don't have as much size and, and um, physicality. So uh, I think that that'll be important for us. And yeah, versatility for his question. Um, certainly guarding and then continuing to, you know, make some of those plays and, and be kind of that swing player. Mike. I started asking you about Blake, there's obvious opportunity there in the post. What about the other freshmen where maybe there's less urgency to, to need them? What have you seen from them? And um, what is your plan or hope for the, for the rest of that group? Yeah, those guys, you know, we've got, uh, tell me all of our first years. Like, I mean, I get the first year, second year. We got, obviously, Anthony and Elijah and Christian and Blake and Leon um, as a red shirt. Am I missing one? Help me out here. Is that it? Yeah, Des as a walk-on for sure. Um, that's it. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, again, Christian was coming in. He's supposed to be a senior in high school, and his plan was to come in and redshirt all along. And, you know, I said, let's just see. We don't have to make that decision really till whenever. Um, Anthony, we talked about all three of those guys because Elijah came in with a, an ACL repair, and he's actually starting to move. He shows flashes, so his, his athleticism is real and his flashes, and he's not even quite there yet, and he's, he's building up. But I think missing a whole year of playing, he's got to get his timing back and build the knee, the quad, and he was, who's had the, the VMO, who's ever had ACL injuries here, all that work you do in a deal. He's got to get his knee continually stronger. Um, and promising future. Very, he's a guy who can go get his own bucket, which I like, and I think he has the makings with his quickness defensively that he can become one of those perimeter defenders that we're going to like a lot. Um, and again, those are decisions we'll talk about. Is he ready? What does it look like? Is it, you know, is it something we talk about? Is it waiting a year? What's his health? I always leave the decision up to the players if they're in a spot like that. Anthony, uh, strong and athletic. He's newer to the game, but his physicality um, and his ability, and he's starting to really move his feet and rebound hard and just kind of, you know, follow that role of growing slowly. Is, it could be really good, but you just can't look past his physicality um, you know, we'll talk about what's best for him this coming year. And again, all that in the recruiting process was laid out, as with Christian. But his physicality is good. Christian Bliss, um, heady, skilled, smart. He wasn't here all summer, and it's, it's, you can tell. And he was playing, you know, EYBL ball and good AU ball, but you can tell he missed that in the weight room and that stuff. But he's all three of those guys have shown some stretches where, like, that's what we're looking for. And that as they continue to improve, that's going to be able to help us. And you know, I talked to all these guys uh, about our team this year, the long game, the long game. And I know that doesn't sound, but that's what I think our, our season is, the long game. There might be some ups, downs, but can you be good? The long game becomes some at the end. Can your career, the long game, that's what's going to last. All this, it's got to be so fast. Things have to happen right away. No, no, the guys that are lasting for us in their professional careers have dedicated themselves to the long game. And I think. Those guys all have big upsides. Those three first years I mentioned, of course, Blake too, if we're talking about just the first years. And um, you know, it's our job to pour into them, to develop them, whether they're playing a lot, a little, whether it's a red shirt year and all that stuff, and just keep them, try to our best to keep them in this program so that you, you know, you get a return on that. And that's, that's what's being challenged now in our, the way things are, but I still think it can be done. Thanks, we good? All right.